Hello and welcome to this episode of A House in France. I'm Mark Johnson. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the show, you might notice that things are a little bit different. And that's because this is the first show from the new TTFN TV studio. And as always, I am joined, not over Skype, but in person by my co-host Lloyd Arrow. Lloyd, welcome to the new studio. Yeah, fantastic studio. It's, um, it's great to be here. And um, it's just, uh, the last time I saw it, it was a shell, but it's just fantastic. And uh, we're also joined by... We're joined by our producer, Peter. There's, uh, there's Peter. And of course, we mustn't forget, we're also joined by Spike. <laughs> the, the, the one bit of prop that we have so far in the studio. So, so far. <laughs> and I, I, it was purchased on, on the understanding that I only had to water it once a week. And I failed so far this week. All right, so we're in July, end of July, holiday season. We've both been to, uh, both been to France. So how was your trip? Yeah, it was great. It was um, actually great to uh, go to the house, uh, which was the main reason for going. But um, it was good to actually go into the place itself rather than uh, what we've had so far, which has just been pictures of the place. So rather than just having a drawing, we could literally walk into the building. And it was, um, it was just... Uh, it, Amazing feeling, really. Looks but, huge. Yeah, my uh, my brother who came actually to visit the following day, he walked in and said it looked like a warehouse. Uh, but uh, you can see it's a, it's a fair size, but uh, not too big. Just to give you some scale, there is, and uh, it was just great to to go there. And that raised area, what's uh, what's that? That's actually the uh, garage floor. Uh, it's because the house is actually built on a slope. Uh, what they've done is they've built the garage up, so that's actually level with the road outside. Okay. And uh, just to give you an idea, I was actually there, so it's not just a Photoshop picture. <laughs> that's great. They've actually got the tiles on the roof there as well, I noticed. Yeah, so yeah. tiled. Tiled and ready to go. The next stage is the windows, which we were hoping were going to be there when we, uh, we, we visited, but that uh, wasn't to be the case. So how's the time frame looking? Because I think it was meant to be done sort of by the end of the year. That's right. They gave us a kind of a window, really, which was uh, September towards sort of January, really. As I, so from that, the, uh, the, uh, the time scale hasn't really moved uh, as much. Um, having said that, I don't think it's going to be ready by September. So, um, so how was your trip? You went uh, back to the Dordogne. Yeah, it was very different this year. We, we didn't have the great weather. I mean, well, we, well we, we had one week of absolutely superb weather. The, we arrived and it had been... Uh, I think they'd had three months with uh, with no rain, high temperatures. Everything was brown. We'd only seen it like that once before in the what six years we've been uh, we've been going there. The uh, uh, you know it was warm, fantastic. The pool you know warmed up quickly. We had a really nice uh, first week, and then the weather changed, and we had uh, ten days of uh, pretty appalling cold weather. In fact, our Dutch neighbours for the first time that uh, since they've been there, and that's for ten years actually uh, lit a fire in the evenings in July. Can you, can you believe that? So we actually came back early. We ended up coming home um, a, a week early. So it was fine. We got a few jobs done, but uh, it wasn't quite the, uh, the weather wasn't there this year. But you know, we'll go back in uh, probably later in the summer or the end of the summer and have another week there. Now, on the last show, we talked about the fact that uh, there was a proposed new tax on second homeowners. And this was going to cost, well, we don't, nobody knew anywhere. We heard estimates from, you know, doubling your taxes to quadrupling them. We didn't know if it was going to cost a significant amount of money to, uh, uh, to second homeowners. And uh, it's been scrapped. It's not going to happen. And uh, surprise, surprise. We're not sure why it was even announced. There was talk at the time that it was probably against uh, EU legislation because you can't treat the members of one European nation differently to the way you're treating your own members, et cetera, et cetera. But the good news is it's not going to happen. Uh, that is good news because uh, one of the things we were worried about uh, to, uh, with the house uh, under construction is that uh, we would have to incur these charges as well. Um, another thing we've been thinking about, and uh, we've touched on it before, is uh, the pools. Uh, in this episode, we're going to go a bit um, deeper. A bit deeper into pools. Right, OK. Right, well, we had our pool uh, built uh, for us. Uh, we haven't actually finished the terracing around it, but the actual pool was uh, was built for us. And I think I might well do it do it myself if I had the time. Uh, it's yeah, it's fairly simple uh, simple construction. 
the, uh, the principal uh, construction methods are a, a block or brick surround concrete base. You can, of course, have a fiberglass pool you know, put into, uh, into the ground uh, or as a new method of building the walls, which is a big polystyrene uh, empties or wall sections, which you then pour concrete into and uh, put rebar in and, and seal it up. So they're becoming uh, popular as well. Um, but uh, that, I think, is fairly straightforward. And of course, you need to decide whether you're going to line it or put uh, tiles on it. I think lining, I don't think I would attempt uh, uh, putting a liner in, especially on a fairly large pool. Uh, tiles, I've spoken to people who have, uh, have, have put their own tiles on. And it's fairly straightforward, except you have to do it to get the best seal in one go. That way, you know, the tile cement doesn't have any, uh, any joints in it. It's just one uh, seal around the pool. But it does mean if you've got a big pool, you probably need to get all your mates around, a barbecue and some beer, and get it all done in, uh, in one day and uh, night. I'm not sure it's something I'd fancy doing because you know, I get fed up when I've done a shower. So doing a pool would be uh, a big undertaking, I think. Bit of a challenge. So um, you mentioned size. I mean, how do you s decide what sort of size pool to build? Well, obviously, you know, space you've got is one thing. But we'd uh, sample different pools. We stayed, I think, the year before we bought the house, we stayed at a... Um, a campsite, a mobile home site in France, where they had a couple of 10 by 5 meter pools. And we thought, that's a great size. So that's what we ended up going with, with a 10 by 5 meters. Then there was a discuss this discussion on steps, etc., etc. And uh, uh, Suze decided that she wanted Roman steps. So we've got Roman steps on the, uh, on the end of it as well. And that they work quite well. Right, yeah. One of the things, I, um, a place we visited that had a pool in, uh, on the downside, they had the steps on the inside, which uh, reduced the actual s swimming area of the pool itself. Uh, I suppose the other thing you get, have to consider then is the depth. Uh, that's a really good point because we didn't actually think about that much. We just went for the traditional, you know, one meter at uh, deep at one end, and you know, two and a half meters deep with a slope, you know, in in the middle. And that's actually great for. Um, uh, you know, if you want to do diving and stuff, but really, we, not much of that happens. But what does happen a lot, especially with the kids and people, you know, friends staying, is you play games in the pool. You're playing, uh, you know, volleyball or whatever. And guess who has to be in the deep end? So I'm there doing like this, trying to hit the ball, and they're all down the other end, just you know, just going like this. I, if I was doing it again, I think I'd have a constant depth pool. I don't know what that depth would be. Probably, you know, 1.4 meters or something like that. 1.5 meters enough for swimming and for playing games. But that's a personal decision. But I think that is it's a really good question, something that we didn't give a second thought to when we were doing our pool. I suppose, again, with the size of the pool, you think then got to take into account the volume of the water and uh, about heating. Yeah, now we didn't have it heated at first. The first couple of years we had the pool, um, it, was, uh, it, it was usable. It would vary between 21 and 26 degrees depending on uh, on the weather and that was great that worked uh, that worked pretty well and uh, then we had a cold summer and we decided well enough's enough if we're only there for two weeks or whatever we want it to be warm enough and so we had a, um, a heat pump heat exchanger based off air put on so that means for every one unit of electricity you get four units of heat so it's a uh, you know reasonably efficient not that heating a pool can be seen as being particularly green but we wanted it to be as uh, you know efficient as possible and uh, that works very well. It heats up the pool by three degrees per day. Uh, so we arrived this time, the pool was uh, at 20. We heat it to 28, would you believe? So two and a half, three days later, the pool was at 28 degrees. And then it just keeps it uh, topped up. But it's not just the heater that you want to think about. If you heat the water, either by a heater or by the sun, you don't want to lose the heat. So what we had put on was a um, a, a cover, which you can see here in the picture, it's on a roller at the end, electrically driven, and it's a, a very good uh, insulator. So it keeps the, it stops the pool losing water. If the air temperature is less than the pool temperature plus about four or five degrees, um, it's, you'll start losing heat. So if, if say, the pool's, pool's at 28 and your air temperature is 32 or less, you will be losing heat from the pool. And so at night when it drops to 20 or 25, you know, you're going to be you know, losing heat uh, like, uh, like nothing's happening. So um, you know, having a good cover to insulate it, especially at night, is very important. That will save you either money on heating or it will keep the pool warmer for you. Right. 
and also the cover then comes into the safety aspect. Absolutely. Um, there are, apart from just having the covers on, uh, you can get um, uh, alarm systems that are either set on the side of the pool or actually go into the water itself that uh, run 24 hours a day, have an audio um, uh, alert sort of system. But then uh, you've gone for the cover one, which again gives you a, a safety aspect as well as the heating. Yeah, I mean, we really went for the cover initially because we need, knew we needed an alarm or a, or, or a cover. Uh, so if somebody falls in, you know, you, they can get help or they don't uh, get into the water. Uh, but the, you know, the side benefits of the cover are, are great. And also, we're in the middle of nowhere. So what good is an alarm? You know, right. <laughs> you know it's, it's not exactly going to, going to help. So I think it's, it's, you know, it's a good idea. Not everybody has it, even though it's the, uh, it's the law. Uh, but you do need uh, a cover or, uh, or, or, or an alarm. I'd recommend a good insulated cover. So what other um, uh, decisions do you have to make then when you're looking at a pool? Well, the, obviously the filtration type is important. In France, salt is probably the most popular. Then chlorine. We actually have a UV system, uh, which you know minimizes the chemicals in the uh, in the water. So there's no taste really. To just you know, it just tastes like water. There's no chlorine taste or a salt, salt. taste in it at all. Um, we have had problems with it, and uh, actually, it's more problems to do with the people who maintain it than uh, than with with the system and. We're still trying to get that sorted. So we've had to, this last summer, we put in some extra chemicals just to keep it uh, uh, okay. But it, you know, it works. It's no worse than having a chlorine pool. So, uh, so that, that's been fine. So you need to decide on one of those uh, systems. The other thing to think about, other two things to think about, which we hadn't really thought about too much, was where you're going to put it, your location, and where to put all the uh, filtration equipment. You need an equipment room. Right. That can either be in a nearby building or shed or what have you, or in our case, we had to have a equipment room built. Uh, so that's quite neat and, you know, houses all the equipment. But where you locate it, we thought, oh, we're going to have it outside there. But when the pool people came along, they said, well, you know, have you thought about the rubbish coming off these trees? Because actually it blows quite away, yeah. you know. And so we put it where the nearest trees are probably, I don't know, 20 meters away. And even still, you get leaves and things in it, but they were going to be a lot closer. And, and also, it's in a place that it gets the sun for a lot more of the day than we... So, uh, location is important. Again, we hadn't thought about that too much, so it is worth carefully thinking about uh, uh, location. All right. Okay, uh, don't forget that some um, just our thoughts and ideas on um, pools. There are um, others, of course. Uh, and you can always uh, email your comments in to us at uh, ahif at ttfn.tv. I talked about Segur, so I would recommend uh, going to one of the websites that uh, talks about uh, Segur. If you do a search in Google on Segur Le Chateau, uh, or you can go to wwwoffitourism segurcom And again, the, webs, uh, the website uh, will have the uh, links. So do visit ttfn.tv, click on the AHIF tab on the top, and look at the episodes uh, link and within the uh, the notes on this episode you will find those two links so that's it for this episode our first episode lloyd from the uh, from the new studio and i hope we'll see you here in uh, in person again and we look forward to uh, getting people's comments to ahif at ttfn.tv and we hope you'll join us again in the future for another episode of a house in france a bientôt <music>